Um, well, Everforce can uh, contribute to adaptation in many ways. And the, the main, I mean, there's, there's some relatively obvious effects, like uh, trees in the landscape have an effect on, on microclimate. Everyone knows that under a tree, in the, I mean, every, every species basically seeks out shade on hot, on hot days under trees. There's an obvious microclimate effect. It can, in many situations, um, benefit crop production as well, because in many parts of, especially the developing world, temperatures are already often a bit too high, a bit higher than, than crops like it. And climate change may make things, of course, even a bit more, a, a, bit, a bit warmer than it is now. So microclimatic effects have a, have a, have a big role to play. That's temperature and it's also humidity. Um, trees in the landscape, the, the main, um, the main benefit in terms of adaptation probably comes through what we call a portfolio effect because they having different life forms in on a farm having crops and having trees kind of widens the range of, of products basically that the farmer produces we don't only have the field crops we also have products that come from the tree now there's timber uh, there's, there's potentially fruits and there's various other benefits that farmers derive from trees that can uh, that give them additional income and in, partic in particular re reduce the risk of climate variability because often if you imagine crops that normally have fairly shallow root systems and can't access a lot of and, and can't access all water resources in the landscape, contrasted with deep rooted trees, you can imagine many weather situations where annual crops might fail and farmers may have to um, have to rely on on, um, on trees basically to sustain their livelihoods because they can access different resources that annual crops can can't get. And in times of crop failure, you'll often find trees still uh, performing relatively well. Is, is it how important is it that when you think about you know implementing these kind of forestry strategies that farmers are careful about what sort of trees they plant? Because I remember reading, and you know this is this is completely unscientific, but I remember reading an article recently about um, carbon offsetting and how actually a lot of carbon offsetting problems cause cause um, cause cause problems because they. They plant the wrong trees, soak up too much water, and that, that, that damages the whole ecosystem around it. So how careful do farmers have to be to sort of when they're thinking about making their making their farmers more climate resilient, picking the right trees? Well they have to be very careful about, about selecting the right trees. And this is one of the one of the key issues we at the World Agroforestry Center work on. Because if you imagine if you plant an annual crop and you make the wrong decision, then next year you just plant something else. If we're planting trees, especially if we get into carbon offset programs, we have to leave these trees in the landscape for 25, 30 years. So if we plant the wrong tree and then maybe the climate gets hotter or it wasn't very well adapted in the first place, after 10 years, 20 years, the tree, the tree dies, then, then we may even fail to fulfill our contract requirements in terms of carbon offsetting. So, so it, is, it is quite critical. And, and that's um, as much as trees contribute to resilient landscapes, they are, of course, also vulnerable to climate change, and in, in, in some ways, they may be more vulnerable than annual crops because of the long time span they'll be in the landscape. So we have, have to be very careful, and we also have to have a rough idea of what, what impacts climate change may have on our trees. And, and this, is, this is something that is relatively poorly understood up to this day. I mean, for annual crops, we have sophisticated models that describe the climate relationship, climate response of crops. For trees, that's often unavailable, and we have I mean, if you, because because we have so many species of trees, we have only there's only a tiny fraction where we have a good understanding of the climatic niche, and we need a lot more uh, characterization in terms of climate requirements to really make make the decisions that are needed and and the, that will be sustainable in the long run. And and in terms of farmers and trees, that there's been a lot of talk about changes in the climate, uh, perhaps ensuring that um, Britain might become the new the new uh, Bordeaux and be able to sort of grow wines everywhere. I mean, are we seeing, are we going to see huge changes in the ways that in, in, in trees, in particular fruit trees, across the world? Are we going to be able to see, is Germany suddenly going to be a home of um, mango production? Well, probably not mango, but uh, I, I think there will be um, tremendous shifts, and we're already seeing, um, seeing quite severe impacts in some parts of the world, in particular on the trees you mentioned, on, on the, uh, trees from the temperate zones that have chilling requirements, that basically need cold winters. There's some parts of the, of the world, especially in North Africa and the warmest growing regions where these chilling requirements are sometimes not properly fulfilled and with quite severe um, impacts on in productivity. And, and I think for, I mean, especially for, for new orchards that are being planted, it's important to keep, keep climate change in mind, if, in, in particular for, um, yeah, for those chilling, chill requiring, uh, requiring species. And, and we should probably try 
um, to find out what trees grow well in places that currently have the climate we're expecting at our at our home in the future. And actually, one thing that can help decide which which which, uh, which trees these are is what we call climate analog analysis, where basically there are certain com uh, computational um, well, procedures you can use to identify the best the best bet um, current currently existing location that resembles the climate we're expecting in the future. In one way to adapt our, our production system even even when we don't properly understand the climate responses is to actually go to these places and see what does there does well there now. These may be the species we can we can predict. And you'll often find for in the European context that these climate analogues are of course much further south. For example for, for northern Germany I've I've run some of uh, some of these analyses and for northern Germany you find climate analogues going into central France, sometimes even southern France, depending on what time horizon you look at. So it is, it's certainly it's certainly important to keep keep these trends in mind, and and for for orchard for, for growers of fruit trees or or of um, or, or um, vineyards, huh? it, it is certainly the way the way to adapt properly to climate change and to so recognize which trees will which trees or vines will grow well in the future, and 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 those who find these and make the best uh, make the best choices will be the ones that benefit from from climate change, whereas. Those that rely on cropping patterns from the past, on the cultivars that did well in their, when they were growing up, they may actually be the ones losing, losing out to climate change.